in a world where the only tier list you can find are by top 500 PC players. The cries of the console army go unnoticed as the overlord computer rulers stomp us to the ground with their tier lists. But no more. I have had enough. Finally, a console tier list for the masses. Starting it off, we have Anna. I'm going to put Anna in the OP but hard category. If you can aim well, you will do well. Ash, very strong. Ash on the high ground, taking pot shots at your team, will not be fun. However, Ash can be dealt with by a good dive or by a good long range damage. Next up, we have Baptiste. On the console, I'm putting Baptiste in the usually diffs tier. That immortality field is just something crazy. And his gun feels so nice on a controller to shoot. I'm always happy with a Baptiste on my team, and will be saved countless times by that immortality field. Next up, Bastion. I am putting Bastion also in this category. If a Bastion's on your team, you can tell for certain he will have top damage. The best comp that I think you can run right now in ranked on the console is Bastion Mercy Reinhardt comp. However, I would put Bastion in the very top, but there are a few things that counter him, and he is desperately requiring a Mercy pocket or just healing in general. So for that, I will put him in the usually diffs tier. Next up, Brigitte. I used to think Brigitte was very strong, but I think she's just good now. She always seems to be doing alright. Rarely am I losing and thinking, oh, it's this Brigitte that's hard carrying. But I'm never thinking, oh, it's the Brigitte that's throwing. They're kind of just in the middle. Another character kind of just in the middle. Cassidy. He went from the top dog to now just middle of the pack. Not being able to one-shot as consistently, and not having the extra health to allow him to be poorly positioned, really took him down a peg. Next up, we're going to have Doomfist. Now, I do love Doomfist, but I can say, if he's on my team, we will rarely win. Every once in a while, though, you will see the Doomfist being absolutely atrocious to the enemy team. It is possible, but it's quite rare, so he gets this tier for that. Up next, Diva. I'll put Diva in the very strong category. Being able to eat ultimates with her defense matrix, being able to fly point blank right into a bastion and just absorb his entire clip is a value to the team. However, I do not think she's up at the top of the tier list, but she's definitely not at the bottom. She's still very strong. This might be a controversial take, but I'm thinking Echo is OP but hard. Most of the time an Echo on your team is not going to do well. However, the Echo on the enemy team is usually going to do well. She requires great mechanical skill and practice, but can be very OP in your games. Following a similar vein, is Genji. However, Genji rarely wins. Echo wins like a medium amount. Genji, if he's on my team, we will probably lose that game. Next up is Hanzo. He gets the same. If we are locking characters and I see that our DPS, random, has picked Hanzo, that game is probably 90% of the time going to be a loss with little I can do about it. The same goes for Genji and Doomfist. These characters are just simply too hard for your average feeble-minded console player, which I am one of. Next up we have Junker Queen. Junker Queen I'm going to put up a little bit into the bad tier. I just don't think she's very good. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll move her up into alright I guess. 
Sure, she's all right, I guess. But not great. Next up, we have Junkrat. I'm s thinking I'll put Junkrat in the very strong. Or maybe good. Mm, I'll do very strong. His ultimate is a game changer. And spamming tight corners and choke points is a valuable asset to the team with not a lot of skill required to put it in. Next up we have Kiriko. I would say Kiriko is very strong. Her ultimate is a fight winner. Or cleanse can save countless allies from imposing death. And being able to instantly teleport to an ally is very good for a support to have. Next up is Lucio. I would say Lucio is also very strong. Allowing his allies to speed into a fight and just run them down is something that is very beneficial and will get you far. Next up we have Mei. Mei is just, she's good. She's never like OP, but never really bad. Kind of just in the middle. Don't get me wrong, there are many bad maze that will do terrible walls and just screw you over. But there's also the same amount of maze that do fire ultimates and just wipe the entire team. So she's kind of just in the middle for me. Next up, all the way to the top of OP and easy, we're going to put Mercy. If a Mercy is on your team and the other team does not have one, you're probably going to win that game. She's slept on severely, and just the mere presence of being able to revive an ally is enough to garner her at the very top of the list. Her constant healing and damage boosting is a severe, severe threat for the enemy team. A mercy linked to a bastion giving him a damage boost while he's in turret form will simply wipe out all five of your team in one second flat. Next up in the OP and easy, I'm going to put Moira. People think Moira is not that good for whatever reason, probably because they're playing Genji and thinking, oh, Genji's so hard to play, he must be good, and a character that's so easy like that can't be that good. However, she is that good. Moira will beat Genji in every fight, every single day, no matter the time. You can put a brain-dead monkey on Moira, and the best player in the world on Genji, and the Moira will still probably win. Incredible amounts of healing. Great survivability. Being able to dash in her ultimate is also a game changer. Next up, Orisa. Orisa is just good. She's a force to be reckoned with. I think the lower in rank you go, the better Orisa gets. In bronze, I would put her higher. But in like diamond or platinum, she's a little lower. She's good, but sort of depending on her healers. If her healers are doing good, Orisa's doing good. If her healers are not healing, Orisa will not be doing great. So she's kind of just in the middle. Next up, Farah. Farah is similar vein of Echo. OP, but kind of hard. It will take some great practice, but the amount of times I've seen a Farah or an Echo just flying around uncontested in the air, wreaking havoc on teams, is quite numerable, and always seems to do the trick. Next up we have Ramatra. Ramatra goes into the usually diffs tier. If Ramatra is on a team, they will probably be winning that, and usually be diffing your tank. He can poke from afar, and then he can bust out his big beefy arms and just run right in and win the fight. His ultimate is a fight winner. Simply his punching form is a fight winner. He's a great character, and one that I highly recommend. Reaper. I'm tempted to put Reaper in very strong. However, I think he's just good. Mm, maybe I'll just do good for now. His ultimate is very good, don't get me wrong, but it's only really good when the enemy team doesn't really know what they're doing and doesn't see it coming. 
he can still be a menace and wins pretty much every 1v1. But his range is a serious factor. And I would much rather have Bastion on my team than Reaper. So for that, I'd say he's just good. Next up, Reinhardt. OP and easy. Reinhardt is the de facto tank to play in the ranked scene right now on console. His ultimate wins the game. His pin wins the fight. His double fire strikes will take down any foe of 200 health or less. He is simply a force to be reckoned with. Next up, Roadhog. The opposite end of the spectrum of tanks. Probably the worst tank in the game right now. Nothing about him is good. He gets countered by all of these characters. He can't really do much. Please bring him back. Sigma. Another tank that usually diffs. If the Sigma's on your team, you're going to be doing good. He's sort of just a wall for your team to rely on. He's like a steady anchor for your team in the perilous seas of ranked. Next up is Sojourn. I'm tempted to put Sojourn in very strong. However, I think she's more akin to Reaper of just being good. That railgun is no joke. But I don't see Sojourn very much. And when I do, it's usually pretty annoying, but I feel like they're not the best anymore. A similar vein is Soldier. I think Sojourn is just a slightly better Soldier 76. When I see a Soldier 76, he's simply just running away cowardly, not fighting not helping, and easily killed. Rarely are they doing that good, but sometimes they are doing good and just have the most annoying angle and you can't get to them and they're just constantly shooting at your healers and whittling them down. So I think Soldier is good. Sombra. Unfortunately, as a Sombra main myself, I have to put her in the rarely wins but can be heinous category. If Sombra's on my team, we will rarely win that game, but sometimes they can be extraordinarily heinous. If you are a healer walking out of your base, getting spawn camped by Sombra over and over, you understand the frustration and know that they can be heinous. Symmetra. Symmetra usually diffs. She's an absolute force to be reckoned with. If the enemy tank pretty much any of these tanks tries to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Symmetra, She's most likely going to win that. She's a menace, but can be sort of countered by these flying characters. So watch out for those. Next up, Torbjorn. Torbjorn and Symmetra have the two highest win rates. And that's because they are both absolutely cracked and not that hard to play. They provide an incredible amount of damage and are both survivable in their own rights. Torbjorn's turret is simply another player on your team, which gives you a great advantage. Bottom end of the spectrum is Tracer. If a Tracer is on my team, we've probably already lost that game before it began. However, I have seen on rare occasion Tracer absolutely popping off and destroying everybody. So I'm putting her in the rarely wins but can be heinous category, along with Widowmaker. I'm sure every single one of you has played against a smurf of one of these characters who just wipes out your entire team by themselves with ease. I know the frustration of that and have sat through it myself. However, if you stop to think of how much usually you lose when you have these people on your team, you will stop thinking that they are actually that good. Because really, I'd say probably 10% of the time, if I have any of these characters on my team, are we going to actually win that game? Next up, Windun from Overwatch. He's alright, I guess. If anyone's healing the person you're trying to kill as Winston, you will not kill them. He does not do a lot of damage, but his bubble and jump are both very nice. 
he's just all right, I guess. Next up is Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball goes into the OP but hard category. If you have the time and dedication to lock in about 50 hours of Wrecking Ball practice, knowing every map location where all the health packs are, then he's an absolute menace. But since you have to put in so much information and strategy and thought into playing him, he goes into the OP but hard category. Next up in very strong, we have Zarya. The dumber the opponent, the better the Zarya. She basically just punishes their own stupidity. If you throw up your shield and the enemies are dumb and shoot you, you'll probably just win the entire game. However, if the enemies are kind of smart and do not shoot your shield, then you're really not that great. But most enemies are dumb. And in the console games of the diamond rank and below, you can guarantee one thing. People are going to be fucking idiots. Next up is Zenyatta. Lastly up, I should say. I'm putting Zenyatta also into the OP but hard category. He requires an incredible amount of aim and positioning. However, his Discord orb can pretty much make your tank beat the other tank, which is just simply how you win Overwatch. And last but least, Life Weaver. This dude sucks major narbs. So, I hope you have liked this tier list. Please consider giving me a like and subscribe. And know that this is for console players of about diamond rank and lower. This is for the average gamer, not the upper enchalant PC snob who thinks, oh, I will only play Hanzo every game. This is for the regular go Joes, the Reinhardt mains, the Giga Chads, the Baptists of the world that carry their games solemnly from the back line, not getting a word of thanks. This is for you, the people, the fighters of justice and glory. Please like this video. Goodbye.